80 days to presidential and parliamentary elections here in Ghana. Good evening and welcome to Join News Prime with me, Samuel Kojo Bruce. Coming up, this are the stark reality of ECG's looming bankruptcy. Administrative challenges and energy crisis moves the PRC to paint a gloomy picture about the state's agency's ability to survive without a partial or total takeover. Details of a PRC advice to the government to immediately disorder a multi-stakeholder engagement for a comprehensive examination of the state agency uh, to avert a possible shutdown of the entire energy sector. Efforts to have our areas paid. Initially, Iron Workers Union that. bagged the termination of FGR Bogos with Pristia Lees as it hopes for a fresh start with a new investor. We have more as they promise to work with the government to find a credible investor to revamp the company. Ghana's energy sector faces challenging times as the electricity company of Ghana is predicted to face a potential bankruptcy due to the ability, the inability of the company to collect revenues for power it distributes. Now, the company's inability to collect revenues is being cited as a leading cause of its indebtedness to other stakeholders, including state-owned entities like Ghana Gas, PRC, GMPC, VRA, and Gridco. In a letter addressed to the Minister of Energy, PRC Executive Secretary, Dr. Ishmael Aka, referencing a letter the ECG had written to authorities about its financial difficulties, revealed that uh, the crisis has the potential of crippling the entire energy sector of Ghana. We'll hear from the former past minister, uh, but now though, let's share with you details of this letter the PRC has written to the energy minister. Now, if you look at it, it is stating that uh, based on the uh, inability of the uh, GCG to collect revenues for power it has sold and the impact on the energy sector, drastic measures have to be taken. Now, uh, uh, we will be he now hearing from, from a power energy min power minister, Dr. Kwabena Donko, who says the ECG's inability to collect revenues uh, should be blamed for its current financial difficulties. Listen to him. To run a business, you need money to run a business. And if you've been given a business where you are, to, you, you are to sell and collect, if you don't sell and collect, you can't put anything back in the system. Do not forget, what we sell and collect under the cash waterfall system is how IPPs are paid. It's how the other SOEs, the VRAs, the grid codes, the PURCs, the, 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 the Ghana Gas, the GMPCs, everybody has their allocation under cash waterfall. So we have to find a way to close the gap to make the whole system whole because we are at the bottom of the food chain. The responsibility is on us to fix the problem. It's a holistic approach. If we do not raise enough money, we will not get enough money to fix it. You know, and the funny thing is that these are operational, these are not operational expenses. These are capital expenditure. Until ECG is a company that has not been capitalized since 2007. All these new reforms that you've been seeing for the past two years since I've been in office have been us trying to be creative in using our operational expenditure to close the gaps. So we, all we do need is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a conversation around the whole table saying that, hey, you cannot be doing this anymore. This is the capital expenditure that needs to be put in. Value this, value that, and let's, let's talk around the big table to find that kind of money to solve some of these uh, technical issues. So that was the managing director of the electricity company of Ghana, Tamo Dubik Mahama. We cannot hear from former power minister, uh, Dr. Kabana Donko, who is saying that ECG's inability to collect the revenues is to be blamed for the current financial uh, status of the company. This is not new. Indeed, it is unfortunate, it is unnecessary, and it is Pardoning that in the month of August, ECG only collected 42% of what they were supposed to collect. This is a serious indictment of the whole distribution system. If, the, if you're collecting only 42% of what you are supposed to collect, there is no way that an entity can survive going forward without drastic structural reforms. Yes, there is the need, but the timing the timing, two months, mm. to, uh, two months into an election. Um, this is not the time for the government of the day to come up with new proposals. Timing is important in business as well as it's, it's, it's important in politics. 
Yeah, but if we didn't need a fundamental rethink. All right, uh, we'll try and uh, do more on this particular story. But away from that, Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel Abu Jinapo, has officially terminated the mining lease of FGR Bogos Supristia Limited, effective today. Now, on April 17th, 2024, the minister granted the company conditional approval to restructure and raise capital within 120 days to settle debts and resume full operations of the mine. However, a report by the Minerals Commission on August 19th, 2024, indicated that as of the August 16th deadline, none of the conditions specified in the conditional approval had been fulfilled. In a press release dated September 18, 2024, the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources stated that the termination of the mining lease was based on reviews of the Minerals Commission's report, as well as findings from a ministerial committee taxed with assessing the company's operations. We'll examine what his determination means for the future of the company and how workers are reacting to the decision by the ministry. But first, let's bring you details of that particular statement. And, uh, it says, the minister responsible for land and natural resources, Honorable Samuel A. Jinapo, MP, acting on the advice and recommendation of the Minerals Commission and the Attorney General, Pursuant to Article 88 of the Constitution, Sections 55, Sections 5, 1, 68, 1, and 102 of the Minerals and Mining Act 2006, that Act 703 and Regulation 200, uh, one of the Minerals and Mining Licensing Regulations 2012, LI 2176, has terminated the mining leases granted to FGR Bogos Supercia Limited, the company, and directed the Minerals Commission to issue a notice of termination to the company in accordance with Regulation 2204 of LI 2176. It continues to say the decision to terminate the mining leases was taken after reviewing various reports from the Minerals Commission as well as a ministerial committee constituted to review the operations of the company and after extensive engagement with all stakeholders involved in this matter. It would be recalled that on 14th August 2023, the Minerals Commission issued a notice to the company pursuant to Regulation 203 of LI 2176 to remedy breaches of the terms of its mining leases. Now, following the expiration of the said uh, a notice the company applied for certain approvals and uh, uh, no objections to raise up to 150 million United States dollars to pay its creditors and bring the mine back to life. It says, based on the application and representations of the company on 17th April 2024, the minister granted the company conditional approval to restructure and raise capital within 120 days to pay creditors and operate the mine fully. Now, the conditional approval was subject to, among others, one, commencing the payment of outstanding salaries of workers within two weeks and uh, completing payment by 30th May 2024. B, submitting evidence to the satisfaction of the Minister and the Minerals Commission of Financial Resources available, available to pay creditors and operate the mine within 120 days. And C, bringing the mine to full operation within 120 days. Uh, it continues to say that a report received from the Minerals Commission on 19th August 2024, after the expression of the 120 days on 16th August 2024, demonstrate that none of these conditions have been met. Subsequent to the report of the Minerals Commission, the Honorable Minister constituted a three-member independent committee to review the operations of the company and make recommendations. The report of the three-member committee submitted on 29th August 2024 confirms the report of the Minerals Commission that the company has failed to meet the above conditions. And then based on the above reports, and on the advice and recommendation of the Minerals Commission and the Attorney General, the Honorable Minister, after engaging with officials of the company, the Ministry and the Minerals Commission terminated the mining leases of the company on Tuesday, 3rd September, 2024. The Minerals Commission has been directed to take measures 
to forestall any negative environmental impact that may arise from the termination of the leases. So that, uh, those are, you know, uh, aspects of the letter communicating the termination of the mining leases. Let's now head to Pristia to speak to workers spokesperson for the Senior Staff Association, McDonald Kito. McDonald, grateful for joining us now from day one. This has been your de demand. Satisfied now? Um, thank you, Kojo, and um, good evening to your viewers and listeners. Uh, um, uh, from day one, our position has never changed. Our mm. position has been one, that uh, Bogos Pristia might needs a credible investor somebody who would inject capital into the operations to make it more sustainable and more viable. Uh, the decision taken by the minister today goes to confirm um, our, our, our concerns and our issues which we've raised. So we are super, super excited. Um, the people of Bogo Supristia, and if you have reporters there, you can check. The whole town is elated. Everybody is happy with just the termination of the leases of the Bogo Supristia mine. So um, workers are excited and are happy, and we believe that this is a new breath for the operations and the community at large. Well, uh, but does this mean that workers are going back to work immediately? We know that, that there isn't any company now. Exactly. Uh, per law, the mine falls back to the state. And as the minister rightly said in a statement, the Minerals Commission has been taxed to look at prospective investors and be able to give the mine to a very viable and credible investor to run operations. This is not going to take place in a day or two. Um, uh, per practice, usually this takes place within a month or two. Uh, in the interim, mm -hmm. as stated in the letter, Minerals Commission is certainly going to take steps to prevent any negative impact or any negative effects on the environment from the abandonment of the operations by FGR. Mm -hmm. So obviously this would need workers to, to be able to manage and handle. So yes, some workers will resume work, but the breadth of the termination has brought joy to workers. Okay. And um, obviously, if it's going to take a month or two for people to come back to work with a new credible investor, mm -hmm. we are happy and we're excited for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So what are your expectations for the new investor you've been craving for all this while? Um, as our position has been from the start, uh, we want a credible and one investor who understands the operation. Unfortunately, this FGR team did not have good understanding of, of gold processing and gold operations. Um, if you look at the credential of the board of directors and the directors of the mine, apart from one or two of them, uh, they were new to, 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 to mining operations. Uh, but we believe now it should be given to people who understand the mining business. Mm. Um, there's so much cry about uh, um, degradation of the environment and pollution through mining activities, be it large scale, small scale, or illegal. We need people who understand the operations that will make the mine work effectively. People who have the financial backing. One challenge of FGR was they didn't have the financial capacity to run the mine. And mining is one uh, capital intensive project or, 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 or business. So we need one, another company who also has the financial capacity to be able to turn around the operations. The man has, has been left for the past nine months. Mm. So obviously, there are things which are, needs to be done. So we believe we would get a credible investor who has the financial capacity to be able to turn around the operations. But Minerals Commission, being the technical people, have a criteria and have people they will look out for. So as a union, as workers, we'll leave that for Minerals Commission. But obviously, for us not to repeat the sense of the past, mm. for the mind to be given to um, a totally new person or somebody who doesn't have a background in mining or the financial capacity. We'll be following the process keenly to make sure that the right thing is done so that we don't find ourselves in, 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 in this situation again. Quite unfortunate. But I'm, 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 I'm grateful to you and we'll be keeping an eye on this particular development to see how this, this ends. Grateful to you. Thank but you. Uh, you. what does the big umbrella body of mine workers uh, make of uh, this particular termination? Um, uh, joining us in studio with me is Abdul Mumin, his Deputy General Secretary of Mine Workers Union. Uh, Abdul, grateful for joining. Now, you believe that uh, this move is in the right direction and in the interest of, 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 of mine workers and, and the industry? First and foremost, I'm General Secretary of the Ghana Mine Workers Union. Okay. Let me say good evening to your viewers. Mm. It is obviously in the best interest of not just the union, but workers and the inhabitants of the Bogos of Christian community. Mm. We've come a long way. 
workers have been frustrated for the past 10 months, largely because the operations of future global resources, and for that matter, the Bogosu Pristia mine, have virtually come to a halt since December of last year. And so clearly, um, what has happened today, what has happened today, the decision by the minister and by extension the government to terminate the mining lease mm. of future global resources, mm. opens a new chapter mm. in the lives of these workers, in the lives of the Bogosu Pristia community. Mm. And for that matter, the union is very happy for the success that we have talked today. Okay. But, but I've seen a letter from the Blue Gold, mm. which I'm told is, is, a, is a mother company to FGR, mm. saying that the termination is not, is not right and it cannot be true. What then will, 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 will mine workers do in relation to that letter coming in from, from Blue Gold? Let me be straightforward. Mm. The fact of the matter remains that Future Global Resources, Blue Gold, they are virtually one and the same. Okay. As a matter of fact, I will consider it as a clone. Or uh, to, to put it in, a, in another form, clearly Blue Gold is just a duplication of Future Global Resources. Mm. And so what we're saying is that we have cited you know, the statement that has been put out there. But there's absolutely no credence anyone should lay mm. to that uh, statement out there. Okay. The minister representing the government of this republic has taken a decision. Mm. He's taking that decision in the best interest of the Ghanaian people. And no private individual can stand against this decision. Mm. I believe that, look, given what we have gone through in the last uh, two, three years, clearly, the Bogosu Pristia community, the workers of the Bogosu Pristia mine will be up in arms if blue gold or whatever they call it there stand in our way. We've come too far. We have been frustrated for far too long and we're not going to take any other excuses from anybody. And so let it be heard here and now mm -hmm. that blue holdings or blue gold or whatever they call it must stay off we have an opportunity to decide on an investor that will bring the needed capital to revamp this mine so that at least our livelihoods, our incomes that we lost over the period, we can regain them. Mm. And also, you know, creditors, small, small businesses that have done work for future global resources have virtually collapsed all of them because they are unable to meet their obligations to these small, small businesses that have done work for them. Mm. So I just disregard the statement uh, with the contempt that it deserves because as far as we are concerned there's a new chapter that has been opened and that is the direction we want to go okay now what specific steps are you taking in, in partnership with the ministry the minerals commission and all stakeholders to ensure that you do get that particular investor that you're looking for as a matter of fact the minerals commission has been quite proactive mm. and i want to give them thumbs up because right from about two years ago when this mine started having these issues. They constantly monitored the operations and submitted reports to the minister on a regular basis. And so clearly, the, the Minerals Commission has been on top of their job. Mm. I'm aware, based on conversations that have been, had, um, I mean, have been held formally and informally, the extent of work that has been done with a view to securing um, an investor to take over the place. Mm. I'm pretty confident that in the coming days, we should be able to settle on an investor okay. that would bring the needed investment into the operations of the Bogosu Pristia mine. Mm. So, and so. the union will definitely give the government mm. all the support and all the backing that okay. they deserve. So okay. that as quickly as possible, at least investors can get the comfort, investors can get the solace, knowing that when they bring in their investment, it won't go down the drain. We'll be able to turn around the bogus of Pristia mine. All right. Uh, grateful to you, Abdul Mumin, for joining us here and wish you all the best. Thank you. And uh, now, uh, away from that, but still staying in the mining sector, but to illegal mining, Joy News can confirm that Chinese miners continue to contaminate the Tunnel River with their tailings at Sanaboy in the western region, despite continuous report of direct washing of mining waste into the river. Close to two years after our report of Aquanta Mining Limited polluting the Tano River, our team has captured recent footage of mining activities along the river with poisonous mining residue. Love FM Serastos Sarodonko went back to Samaboy to gauge the situation in our reports. In 2022, Joy News captured this mining site belonging to Aquanta Mining Limited, 
whose mining residue was being directed into the Tano River. First, in the, anywhere you reach in the forest or at bush, you just get a stream, you sat down there and drink, but now you can't get, you can't get those streams. So in fact, our river bodies all has destroyed. Just behind you is the Tano River. How do you feel when you see it? In fact, how does the government feel? Subsequently, we also captured some Chinese miners washing mining residue into the tunnel at Boya and Bena, close to Samraboy in the western region. Close to two years after our report, the criminal act is still being perpetrated by miners along the Tano River. Alaji Salisu Muhammad Abu is an opinion leader at Samraboy. If you look at the way the government has left people, government saying that he will put his presidency on Galamse, illegal mining. In fact, it's rather worse. This is a campaign regime. We have been hearing promises, promises, but we have no future. These forests and our water reserves. People are saying in 10 years time or five years time, never. If this will continue, at least in two years time, a change of government will come and this will still continue. I don't think we have future Ghana. This footage shows a mining site located on the edge of the Tano River, washing its residue directly into the river at Samraboy. The river is highly polluted. Tests conducted by our team registered 0.346 and 0.187 milligrams per liter for arsenic and chromium, an increase of 592 and 274% respectively compared to World Health Organization's accepted levels of 0.050 milligrams per liter. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaredonko, Samra Boy, Western Region. Quite a troubling, uh, you know, pictorial evidence of what's happening there. But Democracy Hub, organizers of the Fix the Country demonstrations have waded into the na nation outburst over the illegal mining menace as they renew calls for the resignation of the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel Abu Janapo. Beyond this demand, the group believes that other ministers and sectoral agency heads, uh, including the head of the Environmental Protection uh, Agency, should be equally uh, relieved of duty owing to their failure to put an end to illegal mining. Already the group have notice they will hit the street in the coming days while taking additional measures to drum home their demands addressing the news conference on the on ending menace of illegal mining. Uh, the, uh, uh, you know, Democracy Hub told journalists at the news conference here in Accra that they plan to stay on the street for three consecutive days to draw the president's attention to act now. These are not separate issues. They are all symptoms of a government governance system that has failed. The only way to end Galamsey, to ensure economic stability and to root out corruption is to dis demand systemic reforms. We need a new social contract, one that prioritizes transparency, accountability, and the well-being of all citizens, not just the wealthy and powerful. Demands holding leadership accountable. We are not just calling for an end to illegal mining. We are calling for the resignation of those who have allowed this crisis to fester. We demand the immediate re resignation of the following officials. The Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation. The Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. The heads of the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, the Minerals Commission and the Forestry Commission. These are the individuals who have failed to protect our environment. We have turned a blind eye to the devastation caused by Galamse, and we have allowed corruption and greed to destroy our natural resources. They have failed in their duties, and they must go. A call to we also demand a full independent audit 
of all mining licenses granted in the past five years. With the results made public, the time for secrecy is over. The people have a right to know how their resources are being managed and who is profiting from their destruction. A call to action. The future is yours to shape, but this doesn't have to be our future. We can break the cycle. We can demand a new social contract, one that holds leaders accountable, that prioritizes sustainability over short-term gains, and that places the well-being of every citizen at the forefront of governance. We can demand a new constitution that ensures transparency, limits the powers of those in office, and creates systems of accountability that prevent the greed and corruption that have brought us to this point. I say to you, rise up, young people of Ghana. Rise up and take your place at the forefront of this movement for change. Rise up and demand a government that works for you, not against you. Rise up and be the voice that says Galamse must stop. Uh, but on a rather interesting note, the widespread of Galamse menace has today compelled the Minister for Trade and Industry to issue a strong warning to members of his constituency against any attempt to encroach his land or turning it into a Galamse site. Watch this. This is the Joy News Prime. We'll take a break. I'll be back with more. Please do stay. Let's do election headquarters now, and that is brought to you by Petrosol Platinum Energy, energizing dreams. The Chartered Institute of Management Accountant, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant, together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountant. Also, German Ozone Medical Center, Alternative Therapy, Dental Wellness, and Beauty, Chop Box Technologies, a convenient service and Youth Bridge Foundation, bridging the gap for positive youth development. And today, SBM Intelligence, an African-focused geopolitical research firm, has released projections indicating that the National Democratic Congress could secure victories in 11 out of the 16 regions in Ghana, including key swing regions uh, uh, such as Greater Accra, Central and Western regions. However, the firm also warns the presence of candidates like Alan Krojo Chamanting and Nana Kwame Bediaku could lead to a runoff election. Let's share with you details of the particular uh, you know, research work that has been released. Now, uh, if you look at it in Greater Accra, share of the national vote, 19.86%. SBM projects the MPP to win 45.80%. It also projects the NDC to win 51.85%. In Ashanti, the Ashanti uh, share of the national vote is 17.79%. MPP is projected to win 70.50%. NDC, 27.50%. In Ishting, the share is 9.51%. MPP is projected to win 58.50%, whilst the NDC is projected to win 40.50%. In Central, which has a share of 8.83%, um, the MPP is projected to um, um, you know, uh, have 46.50%, uh, whilst the NDC will win that uh, region with 49.50%. Northern uh, has 7.04% share of the national vote. The NPP is projected to get 48.58%, whilst the NDC will win by 50.85%. In Western Region, which has 6.64% of the national vote, the NPP is projected to get 47.80% of the 
of the vote, whilst the NDC will win that, that region with 51.50%. Voter, uh, the MPP is projected to have 12.80%, whilst the NDC will win with a open 88.90%. Well, in Upper East, the MPP is projected to get 34.80%, whilst the NDC get 64.50%. The, in Bono, the MPP is projected to win by 56.85%, while the NDC is projected to secure some 44.50% of the vote. In Western North, the NPP is projected to get 46.50%, whilst the NDC is projected to win by 53.80%. Bono East, the MPP is projected to get 40.50%, whilst the NDC will get 495 in Upper West, the NDC is projected to win by 69.85%, whilst the MPP will secure 28.50% of the vote. So that is what the SBM intelligence is saying. Now joining me via Zoom is Bunmi uh, Bailey, who is head of research, SBM intelligence. Uh, but grateful for joining. Now what's the summary of your findings? Okay, good evening and thanks for having me. Mm. Okay, based on our findings, we project that NDC would secure 11 out of the 16 regions in Ghana, while the rest would go to the current ruling party. Mm. And if this happens, Mohama would become the first former president to return to the presidency after losing in 2016 and 2020. And another interesting thing is that um, by our projections, right, the current, um, this would actually make the current ruling party to actually fill in its efforts to actually break the top 10 costs. As we know, since 1992, um, no party has actually secured more than two consecutive terms. Mm -hmm. And also, it's also to note that two of the major um, candidates are actually from the north, where most of the voters, uh, most of the chunk of the voters are. Mm -hmm. Well, we understand there could be a possible uh, runoff, but, but tell us about the met methodology. Okay, so from the method, um, what we used is um, basically results from the previous um, um, election results. Mm. But what we actually did to actually make it more accurate was we used our methodology, which is called the confidence, um, the confidence interval estimate, where we actually use um, results from previous elections to actually predict outcome. And in addition, we also re actually um, used um, the qualitative survey, where we actually interviewed to find um, people's um, view on who they are actually going to go vote for. Mm. Now, if the election gets into the runoff, did you also find out who could then win the runoff if we get there? Uh, we can't really possibly say for now, mm. but there's a most likely our second round of um, results, which will come in November, would actually know by then. Okay. All right. Grateful to you for joining us with uh, those details uh, still saying with politics. Flag bearer of the new patriotic party, Mohamedou Baumia, uh, has promised to construct a mini harbor and sea defense for the people of Sege if he is elected president in the upcoming 2024 general elections. This pledge, according to the vice president, is aimed at improving the local economy, enhancing livelihoods and protecting coastal communities like Sege from the destructive effect of sea erosion. The following report has more. During a campaign stop in Sege, Dr. Baumia said he hopes the sea defense, once constructed, will safeguard the coastline and the people of Sege from the continuous threat of tidal waves and erosion, while the mini harbor will provide opportunities for fishermen and traders, facilitating trade and transportation in the area. In Sege, the fishermen want pre-mixed fuel. So we want to establish automatic dispensing digital machine for pre-mix here in, in Sege. We need a mini harbor here. We need a mini harbor. So we are going to work on bringing a mini harbor to Sege here for you. So that is a very, very important thing. Of course, the roads also need to be done. Uh, we have issues with roads in this part. And so we are going to deal with some of the problems that you have already raised for all of us. And then, of course, very important, we need to do the sea defense for this area. At Ada, the vice president warned electorate in the area not to commit a mistake 
and vote for former President Mahama, who he says has nothing better to offer the country. The pain was the one that was left. All the breach was finished. And because the breach was finished, even chalk in school was a problem. Teachers will attest to this. Chalk in school was a problem. We had problems with teacher training allowance, he will be cancelled. Medicine training allowance was cancelled. We slept in two so for four years past. So many things were really swamped in that period. So many jobs destroyed. Many people died because hospitals did not have electricity. We were queuing for petrol, if you remember. The vice president's campaign tour also took him to the Ningo Pram Pram constituency, where he urged electorate to choose him as president to transform the country through digitalization. You're still watching John is Prime. We'll take a break here. I'll bring you showbiz. Please don't go away. All right, so welcome. Let's do showbiz now. And oh uh, my Wow, well, David decided to put us on like that. I look good. Look you at do. me. I you know, do. I you always do. do. You look good. Uh, uh. Let's congratulate Guru. Okay. Because mm -hmm. uh, he has been elected president of the okay. University of Ghana Students Representative Council oh. in the 2024 okay. elections, according to multiple reports. Guru, along with Vice President uh, running mate Jeffrey, obtained 9,455 votes, representing 50.7% of the total valid uh, votes cast. We'll be hearing more of the uh, varied box and all of that. But yeah, so the presidency uh, with clear majority, the election saw uh, a voter turnout of 18,659 out of possible about 60,000 students, one of the highest voter turnouts in UG elections in recent years. Emmanuel Owusu Amponsa and his vice presidential partner, Lawrence Edinam Egle finished in second place with 6,645 votes, uh, which is 35.6%, uh, where Noah and Odai Abigail Ohiniwa trailed behind with 1,518 votes, which is 8.1% in the race for general secretary. So congratulations to yeah. Guru. The yeah. news is just yeah. coming in. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah like you know, an, an entertainer. He's going back to school yeah. and Showbiz becoming versus politics. an SLC president. president. Samini did Samini it did at, at, Gimpa, at Gimpa. And he's done it at, uh, at Legon. Yeah, for so those of you who don't know Guru, mm. well, so Guru right there, congratulations to him. Uh, let's also congratulate Joe Metal for releasing his album. He's been speaking oh, to my okay. colleague Ike Asan mm. and detailing the inspiration behind the new album, which is called uh, Spirit Album. Yeah, Songs of the Spirit. Inspires the spirit. That's what it is. So you're able to tell who would be able to interpret or you know break down a particular song the way. It, it should sound, and so that's how uh, prayerfully you select the people that are on, on each um, song. But amongst all of them, I know you would definitely have one song. That as for this song, this, song. this mm, mm. I think every one of them like does something unique to me based on what the situation is. Because you know, like the way we're saying. You can't have children and choose the best of your children. They are all your children. They are all, so they all minister to you in different ways, depending on the, the moment or the time. So now that the album is out, what's the next step? I know you've just done some recording, but what's the really... Oh, no. the, the next step is not to touch these new ones. We are just going to push the old ones for a while. In fact, outside these ones, there are actually songs still there that are already done. So like, we have a few. Like, <laughs> I'm sure that if we decide tomorrow once we release an EP, there are songs ready. So, but these ones are for a later time. But I just think uh, sometimes we get moving around a lot. So I, I just don't want to stress ourselves trying to record 
I'm trusting God, even by December, there will be new songs again. We'll, we'll, we'll share with the people as God gives us. That's it. Joe Metal right there. Let me take you to uh, Brace's personal favorite, Kundum yeah, Festival, happened uh, this year. Saw the performances from Samini mm -hmm. and his uh, son. And in Zima, mm -hmm. uh, to thank our gods okay. and the maker, you know, for the harvest. So okay. it's, uh, to celebrate the end of, uh, you know, the beginning of harvest of, of a lot of food. What come. did we harvest though? Uh, I mean, they tell in the olden days, you know, we, we used to grow uh, corn in our area. Okay. Uh, all the food stuff that we grow. So at that period, we are thanking God for bumper harvest because we know that after the festival, we'll have a lot of food to eat. Mm. So, yeah. so, so this was crowned with a performance or uh, an event, you, 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 you want to call it. And we have all the details here for you. Okay. I think they were, <laughs> we're going to do the Ebisa dance. You can or, teach me. Oh, the Ebisa. That was what, yeah, is that, yeah, was that know, it? Okay, so he was doing the, uh, they call it Achim. Achim. Achim is our fault. So, which one uh, so you know, you know, the Ankos thing, I, I think is modeled after the Ebisa dance, mm. you know, huh? We need to have time so we can, we, we can, can, we yeah. can, yeah. We, we, you need to take me there. I have to. So we do a little bit I of know, tourism. You missed out. Yeah, I did. Next year, you don't have to. It's okay. the biggest thing you can ever have okay. in this world. Grace, you're As, in the spirit. Aside Westside Carnival, mm. Kondum. Please brush is. your teeth with exactly. pepsodents this mm -hmm. evening. Mm -hmm. When you wake up tomorrow morning, also brush your teeth with pepsodents because with pepsodents, every smell matters. Please log on to myjoyonline.com. That's where you find all the news. Uh -huh. uh, Braze has all the details on Kundum Festival uh, for, uh, you. for you there and yeah. all about the dance and the something. You know. We're Kundum out of here. <laughs>